Hi, I'm Lori Milroy, Washington, D.C. correspondent for Kurdistan 24, and we're here to discuss a wonderful new book by Bernard Henri Levy called The Empire, Empire and the Five Kings, America's Abdication and the Fate of the World. Thank you, Bernard, very much for joining us today. Maybe we can start with the question that people will have. What is the empire and what are the five kings? The empire is, is America, and the five kings are these um, authoritarian powers who are taking advantage of the retreat and the abdication of America. China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Iran. These are five states, sometimes some rogue states, at least some imperialist states, who are filling the vacuum left by America in the process of its retreat. And you see this as something that began when? I see that as something which appeared to me it appeared to me, I had the intuition of this big geopolitical move, of this huge geopolitical earthquake in Erbil and in Kirkuk in September 2017, October 2017, at the moment of the referendum and then of the Battle of Kirkuk. I was there with my Kurdish brothers, and I was a witness of this incredible betrayal of the Kurds by their American and European allies. I was the witness of this betrayal. I was the witness of the Kurds delivered on a silver plate to Iran, to the Iranian, pro-Iranian militias. I was witness of this uh, uh, breaking of the country by the sizing of the area of Kirkuk. And I was the witness of America and Europe doing nothing to prevent that. And I was witness of Iran, Turkey in particular, acting as if America did no longer exist. And then I had the intuition of this book. And then it was the start of this book this new world. So Kurdistan for me was really the revelation, revelation of my, of this, this new situation. It was a starting point, the stemming point, stemming point of my thesis and of my reflection. That's why this book is dedicated to the Kurds, that's why the, why the, the book, this big picture of the world today starts in Erbil, with an encounter with uh, uh, Netshirvan Barzani, with an encounter with uh, uh, President Barzani, uh, uh, Masoud Barzani, uh, with uh, uh, my, my brotherhood with the Kurdish fighters with whom I was and who were so depressed and so uh, uh, understood so little about this situation which was falling on them. This is the start of the book. So Kurdistan is a mirror, as you say? Kurdistan is uh, more than a mirror. It's a mirror, of course, because it reflects the state of the world. <laughs> but it is, uh, alas for the Kurds, a sort of central place. It, it was, in these days of October 2017, it was the capital of the world. Uh, Kurdistan had been the capital of the world's suffering, for a long time. Kurdistan had been the capital of the world's resistance and, and battle against ISIS, of course, because Kurdistan, as you well know, did fight nearly alone with the support of the coalition, but on the ground they were nearly alone against ISIS. They paid a high price of blood and of sacrifice to protect of course, their families, but also my family, your family, the family of every American and European citizen. But suddenly, Kurdistan became also the capital, the dark capital, capital at the expense of the Kurds, of this new world 
taking shape in front of our eyes. I was there, and I saw, really, the retreat of America. Uh, when I saw the Abram tanks uh, dr driven by Iranian <laughs> pro-Iranian militias and shouting in Alton Kupri uh, to my, 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 my Kurdish friends, strugglers, I, I understood that something was really going on and that, alas, Kurdistan was the mirror, the capital, the epicenter, the epicenter of this huge tectonic uh, move, of this huge earthquake. Maybe you could tell us uh, what you describe in your book about what it was like the days of the referendum in September 2017, followed then by the blockade, followed by the attack on the Peshmerga. That, that's a huge change in mood. Of course it's huge. What, what, what happened? Three steps. First of all, hope for the Kurds and for all their friends. The time had come after so many decades of suffering, of sacrifice. Uh, at least, uh, at last, moment had come for the world to hold its promise. Promise to give a state to the Kurds. Promise was given in 1920, 21, the treaties following the First World War and so on, you know that. So one, step one, Kurdish people in Erbil had the hope that the promise will be fulfilled. Number two, uh, a referendum happens. You know the result. The crowd goes in the street. Uh, I, I am myself with President Barzani, with Prime Minister Barzani, uh, now next president, Nechirvan, who are among the most decent men I met since long, both of them, great men, great warriors, men of honor, Nechirvan and Masoud, men of honor, faithful allies of the West, uh, faithful defenders of the humanistic and, uh, and liberal values of the world. I was with them. I was on the, uh, on, the front, on the former front lines also, which I knew because I did make Peshmerga. And I met the same people whom I saw a few months before uh, with a gun. I saw them voting. Okay? They put the gun in the cupboard, or maybe uh, just in a, in a tent. They put ink on that figure, and they voted, replacing Kalashnikov by the vote, and hoping that the time for the reward had come. And then I saw in the same faces the uncomprehension. I saw on the same faces the, the sadness, and even a sort of silent revolt. What? We Kurds did what we did, paid the price we paid, and the world is abandoning us in Kirkuk. And then in Alton Kupri, where the, the Iranian uh, pro Iranian missions were, were held because of the bravery of a little group of Peshmerga who did resist, but with so little support. So I was the witness of all of that. And I was the witness and this is my book of our entry, our Kurds, Americans, French, Europeans, in a new world. As I say in my book, a sort of pre-Columbus world. Columbus, the one who is supposed to have discovered America. Because of this, these events happening in Kurdistan, it is as if we were entering again back in a pre-Columbus world. Erdogan. Uh, Khamenei, uh, the Iranian, uh, and all the actors were acting suddenly as if America did not exist. It is, not, it is more than abdication. It is even more than a retreat. It is as if America had vanished. The then State Secretary of America, Rex Tillerson, sent a few letters, made a few interviews. It was as if he did not exist. There was in the behavior of Erdogan, in the behavior of the Iranians, and the in the behavior of the pro-Iranian leadership in Iraq, a way of uh, a sort of arrogance, a, a, a way to push their advantage 
whatever it costs, without considering the possible reply of the international community and of America. They did not care. They were uh, uh, scr uh, absence of scruple complete in Erdogan and in Iran. They acted as if America had disappeared from the map of the world. This was, for me, a political and a philosophical experience <laughs> as I never did in my life. And of course, I was sad. And I, I tried to do my best. During this week, I called my president, France, who was probably the one in the West who did the most, the more, who tried to, to, to do what, what he could. Uh, the, my, my Kurdish friends know I will not say here more. Uh, and I left Kurdistan by the last plane that was authorized to leave before the blockade. This is the start of the book. This is the way it begins. So you saw in Kurdistan the liberal values that the West had developed and nurtured, but then had abandoned. You saw in the Kurds the embodiment of those values, then, embody then abandoned by the countries who had developed exactly. them. Exactly. I saw, but this I saw already before in, my, uh, uh, in the making of my two documentaries, Battle of Mosul and Peshmerga, I saw the embodiment of these values by the Kurds. I saw the, the abandonment of these values. Because, you know, when you abandon the ladies and the gentlemen who did bear with you these values, which uh, were with you uh, at your place on the front line to defend them, when you abandon these people, it means that you abandon your values. Because the Kurds were the sentinels of these values. The Kurds were a, a barricade of flesh, blood, and bones to, to oppose those who were attacking these values. The, the, the Kurds were a wall, not the wall which Mr. <laughs> that Mr. Trump wants to create at the Rio Grande. They were a, a, a living wall of resistance and of defense of these values against the barbarians. So I saw that. I saw America abandoning the values. And I saw Erdogan, uh, all the five bad guys, taking advantage in order to pursue their own agenda and their own dream of replacing the American empire by other empire of their own. Because what those whom I call the five kings in the book, they are five state power who have been empires in the past. Their empire collapsed some in the uh, 15th, 16th century, uh, others in the 19th century, uh, uh, Russia uh, 30 years ago with the collapse of Soviet Union. And all the fives are taking now advantage of this vacuum in order to try to, to, f to, 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 bl to make bloom again their imperial dream. Look at Erdogan. Erdogan is no longer the chief of state of Turkey. He, he is, in his own mind, a sort of neo-sultan of a new Ottoman Empire. This is the way he acts. Look at the Iranians. They are trying to put their foot, their feet, in the footsteps of their far remote ancestors of the Persian Empire. If they are in Damascus, if they are in Baghdad, if they are, if they are making this Shia Ark, who, who was the, the fear, to be honest, of Masoud Barzani. I remember Masoud Barzani telling me two years ago, much before the Battle of Mosul, my real concern, and the real concern of the West should be to prevent the Iranians to make this uh, a Shia Ark going from Lebanon to, to Bahrain or whatsoever, they are making it. This is an empire. So we are seeing the rise of new empires whose common property is to be hostile to the European and liberal values, number one, and to be hostile of their own people and hostile to human rights and attacking very often their own people. That, that's fascinating.